let's look at the electric field. So charges do not have to touch in order to cause forces on each other. If you have a proton and an electron, and they're hanging out near each other, they don't have to touch to cause a force on each other. Um, so how does that work? How can a proton from a distance cause a force on an electron over there? And how can the electron over here cause a force on the proton way over there without them touching each other? The way that we think about this happening is through something called the electric field. Now, the electric field is something that we kind of imagine around these charges, and it's how the charges interact with each other. You might ask, is this field real? Is it imaginary? And that's a really good question. And the answer is kind of, it's kind of both. It's kind of real, it's kind of imaginary. Depends on how you look at it. But the point right now, and the thing we're going to focus on, is that the electric field works. It explains what we observe. So whether it's real or not, and what you mean by real, that's let's not worry about that right now. The point is, is that the electric field is useful. The way that we usually depict it is with electric field lines. So electric field lines um, have a couple rules that they follow, and I will draw a couple examples of electric field line patterns near charges. They always point away from positive charges. They always go out of positive charges, and they always go into negative charges. Also, if the field lines are closer together, that indicates you have a stronger, mag excuse me, stronger electric field at that location. If the field lines are farther apart, that indicates you have a weaker electric field in that location. All right. Um, I want to look at that positive-negative combination, so a positive charge and a negative charge. The one that I've drawn is for equal amounts of positive and negative charge, and this is called a dipole. Um, dipole means it's two, two charges, two opposite charges. Um, so if you look in different areas, like in one area where you're close to one of the charges, the field lines are close together. That means you have a strong field there. And if we go out kind of further from both of the charges, you'll see that the field lines are farther apart, and that means the field is weaker there. One good thing about the electric field lines is that they indicate the direction of the field. Um, we haven't talked about it, but electric field is a vector. So you get the direction from these field lines. Okay. The electric field strength. That's represented by the variable capital E, and it is defined kind of like the gravitational field strength. The electric field strength is the electric force per charge at a location that would be experienced by a small positive test charge. So let's think about what that means. Let's imagine that we got a big positive charge over here. And I want to know what the electric field strength is over here at this location. That's my big question. What's the electric field strength over here? The way that we think about figuring that out is imagine that you dropped a little positive charge at that location, and we'll call it a test charge. So a teeny tiny little charge. And it's going to be positive, so a teeny tiny little positive charge right at that location. Imagine it's a piece of dust with a little bit of positive charge on it. So that little positively charged piece of dust would feel a force away from that big positive charge over there. The electric field strength at the location that we're worried about is equal to the amount of force on that small positive test charge divided by the amount of charge on the little positive test charge. Okay, so in this equation right here, keep in mind this electric field definition has nothing to do of with the amount of charge on that big test charge that's causing the field. This equation relates the force on the charge at the location and the amount of charge at the location. The force that's or the charge that's causing the field hasn't come into it yet. Okay. One useful thing about this is this equation gives us a good unit for the electric field. It's the Newton per coulomb. Uh, another option turns out to be the volt per meter. But we're not going to worry about that right now. We haven't seen volts yet. But if you do see a volt per meter, don't freak out. It's equivalent to a Newton per coulomb. The electric field is a vector. It has a direction. 
Uh, and one way to think about it, the electric field direction is always the same as the direction of the force on a positive charge at that point. Um, similar to gravitational field strength, the total field, total electric field at a location is the sum of all of the electric fields at that location. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's imagine we have these uh, two positive charges like that and they're separated by some distance. If I wanted to know the electric field at a location between them, I would have to figure out the electric field from one of the charges and I'd have to figure out the electric field from the other charge and then I'd have to add up those two fields and I'd have to add them up as vectors which means I have to pay attention to their directions. Okay, And if I go over to the other side of the red one, well let's see, the electric field at that location, well will, there will be a strong electric field from the red one and there will be a weaker electric field from the blue one because the blue one's farther away and the total amount of field at that location would be the sum of those two fields. Okay, and We can even go off of that line, we can go kind of down here and look at the electric field at that location. And we have an electric field from the red guy, we have an electric field from the blue guy, and the total amount of field is the sum of those two. All right. I want to look at the electric field equation again, and we're going to get a different equation. So let's see, the electric field is equal to the force on a positive test charge divided by the amount of charge. Well. That force, we have Coulomb's law. So if we try to find the field from a charge that's causing the field, a single point charge, we can use Coulomb's law in there. And if we do that, the electric field is equal to kq over r squared. And in this case, that q in kq over r squared, that's the charge that's creating the field. And it's creating the field at some location that's a distance r away. So that relates the field at a location to the charge that's causing the field. Okay. And this assumes that it's a point charge.